Hi guys, so today I wanted to do a new movie review video. I haven't done one of these in a heck of a long time, um, but you guys always really seem to like them. These are my, you know, the movies I've watched since the last time I did one of these. I, every time I watch a movie or like finish a season of a show, I write it down and kind of just put some blurbs about what I thought. So um, that's what this is, and I hope you guys enjoy it. I'm always happy to have conversations with you down below about these movies or anything like that. If there's something you want me to watch, I can add it to my list for next time too. So the first thing I watched was Second Act with J-Lo. This came out a while back, I want to say like a year ago. Um, it was J-Lo and Milo Ventimiglia, saying it wrong. I know I'm saying it wrong. And Leah Rem, Rem, I can't pronounce anything. Rem -an 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 -e. <laughs> Um, She's in it too. It's a good, It's you can tell by the commercial um, for it, like the ad if you saw it, that it's about J-Lo, like not, uh, she didn't go to college and she couldn't move up in her job because of that but she somehow like lies about having been to college to get a certain job and position. So that's pretty much what it's about. And it's interesting, like it's definitely not boring, it wasn't like hard to get through. It is pretty good acting, good music, it's like a fun kind of movie. It's like very lighthearted, nothing serious, nothing you have to like focus on to get what's happening. Um, it's not something I would like seek out to watch again or like be like definitely you have to watch it now. But if it's on and like you've been thinking about it, it's not gonna like, you're, I'm here to regret watching it. Late Night. This is something I was super excited about because I love Minnie Cowling and um, what's her face? I cannot remember. Um, Dame. She's a Dame. That's all I can remember about her. But it's about like a late night show, late night a comedy show, um, and it is like Mindy Kaling is a new writer for the show, and um, it looked really funny from the commercials, but it just was kind of a letdown to be honest. It just wasn't as funny as I was hoping it would be. Like it has some solid moments, and it's like a solid movie all around. If they were trying to like push boundaries and like make this whole new idea, they just kind of like if this is the boundary instead of like pushing it down, they like did that. <laughs> If that makes sense, like it just wasn't anything like exciting. 13 Reasons Why Season 3. Definitely the worst of the three in my opinion. The first season is obviously the most like intense and I don't think they even needed a season 2 really. I think they could have ended it with one season but I liked season 2. I did a whole separate reaction video on that but YouTube likes to demonetize those so not gonna do a separate video on this one. Season 3 I felt like it was just really all over the place. I had a lot of flashbacks like how every season pretty much has. Um, it just wasn't really as clear cut as the first two seasons in my opinion. I did feel like it was kind of getting out of hand with this season. Like the things that were being kept secret and um, it kind of felt to me like it was getting a little bit like Pretty Little Liars. Like too much was happening and you really want to figure out like who did this and who did that. Um, and then also the whole season being, I don't want to like spoil it for you, but the whole season is a lot about Bryce who we learned to hate in the last two seasons. And now in this season, like, we're supposed to see the human side of Bryce and see that, like, he's not a bad guy. Like, we're supposed to see all this different stuff about him and, like, see another side to him, which I think was, like, a really bad idea. Like, I feel like it took what season one was about and flipped it on its head and was like, oh, just because someone's a really terrible person doesn't mean they're always a terrible person. Like, yeah, just because Ted Bundy killed all those people doesn't mean he didn't try to save people working at a suicide hotline, but, like, that doesn't make up for what he did, you know what I mean? I felt like this season was trying to make up for what Bryce did. Like, it was so crazy to me. It was definitely strong and, like, more dark and twisted kind of um, but it was also a lot more fake like it definitely made me cry um, and I think the first episode is the worst one like I feel like if you weren't like weren't needing to watch season three but thought about it you're gonna watch the first episode and be like this is weird I don't want to watch it but it gets better um, like I'm glad I watched it it was definitely interesting but it definitely wasn't the best of the three and I felt like it just didn't fit in with the rest of the series like the message of it I don't know if maybe they brought on new producers or something or writers but it just didn't feel like the same story <sighs> a Netflix movie, like a Hallmark movie, um, it's called Falling in Love. It's just like every other like Hallmark or like Lifetime movie. It's over the top and ridiculous and cheesy. It has Christina Milan in it. It has two people from that movie, the show Unreal that was on Lifetime. It's just, it seems really, it's just like very unrealistic. Like the things that happen just like in every Hallmark movie. It's like someone decides to fly across the world without telling everyone, like just drops everything and has time to do this. Like it's just, it, it, it's like if you like that kind of movie, like Hallmark movies like I do, you love it and hate it at the same time. Definitely not like worth carving out time to watch, but like if you're sick or something and you're watching a bunch of stupid stuff, this like, whatever. Next, Hustlers. 
Hustlers. I was very excited to see. I actually went to, to the theater to see it, which I don't do often. Um, I'm sure you've heard of Hustlers with J Lo and Lily Reinhart, like Lizzo. Like so many people, they like made a big deal about being in it. Lizzo was in like one scene. Like the people they made like a big deal about, I felt like I didn't see them as much as I wanted to. And it just wasn't as like amazing as I wanted it to be. I mean it kept my attention and the theater was completely packed when I went. But like it said I even wrote this down. Cardi B and Lizzo were like barely in it at all. Even Lily Reinhardt, her character was so tiny, like not a major role by any means. Um and like I don't know, it was just solid, but like I felt like there was way too many music over the movie playing like it wasn't enough scenes and acting there was like so much like okay these women are strippers and like they're dancing around in money and like music is playing like there were so many of those moments they could have cut it down to like one um it just didn't feel as good as it was made out to be like it had the potential to be better but i feel like I don't know. They edited out the wrong stuff and left in the wrong stuff. Okay, Unbelievable on Netflix. It's a limited series. I'm sure you guys have heard of it. It is nominated for, I think, Golden Globes or SAG Awards, one or the other, or both. Um, it's apparently inspired by true events, which I did not know. That's insane. It's so messed up, but it's so realistic at the same time. It's about a victim of rape and um, the police officers or detectives finding the rapist. Um, and it's about a bunch of different victims, but one specifically is treated kind of similar to how I was when I talked about my sexual assault story video. Um, she just isn't believed and like is kind of forced to lie and say she made it up because people believe she did and she wants to make it easier and like not go through this. The, the things she gets put through and how she's treated by people around her, by the police, by like so many people, it's actually crazy. Oh, it's like heartbreaking. It's the, the police officers who she dealt with are the reason that rapists don't get caught, the reason people don't want to come forward. And like that's the difference between like the difference between these female detectives that are looking for the rapist and the cops that this girl dealt with when her rape happened are the difference between finding someone and not like finding them and letting them be out there doing it again it's just it was a, a really beautiful beautiful show like heartbreaking and like brutal but amazing and I think everyone should watch it. The Wedding Year, that was pretty good. Sarah Highland was posting about it for a while and it's really funny and kind of more unique to be honest. Like I was expecting it to go one way and it kind of went another. It was kind of just like a more indie romantic comedy so it wasn't like super mainstream I guess. I love Sarah Highland obviously and like that is one reason why I wanted to see it but it was really sweet and kind of more realistic in my opinion than a lot of other romantic comedies. Like it wasn't like over the top and ridiculous. It just kind of like felt more like this could actually happen. <laughs> okay, the Suits series finale, I just want to mention that it was good. I think they really ended that on a good, good note. Like they really came about, they didn't just kind of end it like this. It kind of was like a similar to like the Friends ending, how they kind of closed every door that they had to close to give everyone closure. And then of course Rachel ab Rachel's absence from it was annoying um, because obviously like we know Meghan Markle's not coming back to Suits and like we knew that wasn't going to happen, but like it's just so unrealistic in the sense of the show that she wouldn't return for the things that happened in the finale. Um, I mean, they could have given it a more, a better, like, reason for that to happen, like, a reason why she wasn't there. Like, I feel like they kind of just, like, barely tiptoed around it. I really liked the character development from season one. Like, I feel like they really, really focused on the character development more than anything else. Like, how all these characters have changed so much, like, especially Lewis and Harvey. Obviously, they're, like, the main people who I think change the most. Mindhunter is a show everyone was talking about on Netflix a while back, and I never got into it, but someone recommended it, so to watch it, and I watched season one, and I thought it was kind of boring and, like, slow-moving, no action. Um, not really, like, a big action person, but I just felt like I was, like, trying to get through it. Um, season two, I think, was definitely better. I actually think at season five, uh, was it episode five I wrote down. I think it got better episode five. I feel like the only thing I didn't really like about it was, like, the characters versus the crime aspect. Like, there's so many shows that are like that, like, Bones, things like that, where, like, you're following the characters, but also the crime. But this, I felt like, what am I what am I supposed to be more interested in? Like it was like butting heads, not like meshed together for me. And then the ending of season two was crazy and like they have to have a season three, in my opinion. CBS All Access Why Women Kill. I talked about this in a favorites, I believe, and this is an amazing show. If you like funny drama, kind of like the vibe of like Desperate Housewives, but more serious, but also still ridiculous. Like, it's so good. It's called Why Women Kill. It's on CBS All Access. It has Lucy Liu, um, the main girl from Once Upon a Time, 
and oh I can't remember oh what's her name she was in Veronica Mars the new season um it's just so clever and it's like over dramatic and it just made me smile the entire way through it was so funny but it's similar to tell me a story that I talked about last year on CBS All Access where like the second season of why women kill is going to be like different stories so it's kind of like American Horror Story where even if they have the same actors in it it's gonna be a whole different story so like it ended in season one season one's over and they wrapped all those stories up with a nice bow and like they just intertwined like I love how they do that and then season two is gonna be like a whole new set of stories but it's so good like it's a female empowerment show but it's like set in different time periods and like the acting's good it's just all good like there's nothing I would complain about in that show next fractured on Netflix with, it was with Sam Worthington and that's why I wanted to watch it I really like him but this show this movie I guess is so twisted it is dark and it's like hard to watch it's very psychological like I'd say it's like 90% psychological honestly it was it was just hard to follow like this guy pretty much goes to a hospital and uh, is his wife and daughter are there and <laughs> They, he loses them at the hospital and the whole movie is him trying to find them and find out what happened to them and like he's accusing the doctors and the nurses of all being in on this together and at the end you don't really know what happens like it's a bad ending if you hate bad endings where like there's no closure at all you're not gonna like this but it was just so weird like it was weird and I don't I wasn't satisfied with the ending at all then after okay this is a movie I feel like it's really like no one's talking about it and it's super weird um okay after from the commercial that i watched when it first came out was about a girl losing her virginity and how her entire life changes after that that's that's what i got out of it i'm gonna read what i wrote because i just like it, it was very bizarre so it's about a girl who goes off to college but she was very guarded beforehand now when she gets there she meets this guy who's very mysterious and changes everything of course her mom is played by selma blair so that's cool one of the <laughs> i wrote this down she takes a shower at college without flip-flops that's funny um the acting is not great there is so much judging for her being modest like in the beginning she's very modest she has a boyfriend and like uh, like ugh, i don't know how to word it like she's just very like modest that's the word and she's getting really judged hardcore for it there's lots of peer pressure there's a lot of like cheating and like bad relationships and like they made it seem like this movie the fact that it's even called after makes it seem like because you had sex your whole life is gonna change and like that's the way this movie followed followed like the story her mother is actually the worst even though Selma Blair is amazing like the character of her mother is the worst like telling her all this crazy stuff she her mother pretty much like wants to cut her off for the choices she's making and they're not even that crazy and it was just a bad ending it was bad overall i just didn't really like it like it was interesting to get through because it's not really what you expect kind of it's just very bizarre it's just bizarre when a man loves a woman this is an older movie i think from the 80s or 90s it's with meg ryan and andy garcia and it's pretty much a romance drama about addiction it's about having a relationship when you are an addict um, it's really sad, but I think it gives a really good insight into what people go through that you don't know about. I think it's definitely simplified. They simplify the issue of addiction, um, within the, the, the confines of a movie, which makes sense. It's kind of like if you saw 28 Days with Sandra Bullock, it's kind of that kind of vibe. It's definitely good, and one of the daughters is Mac from Veronica Mars. They have two kids, so it's like a marriage. They have two daughters, and, um, it's the woman, Meg Ryan, is an addict or an alcoholic and it's her and her marriage dealing with that her being a mother dealing with that her dealing with being an alcoholic her husband dealing with this whole new part of their life and it's really interesting and super insightful and i think it's a good movie to watch if you like know nothing about that insatiable season two was so good just as good as season one it definitely got way more crazy but it's still just as funny and clever i feel like it literally has the perfect level of like funny and drama to keep you hooked like it's not so funny that you like you don't really care if you watch the next episode but it's not so serious that like it's too dark it's like a perfect balance of it and i don't know if they're gonna have a season three like i feel like they ended it in a way that they could not have a season three but they still could but if they did it would be like totally different dumbo the live action dumbo i didn't like it honestly it's sad and it, it's it's a solid movie it's made well and it's like beautiful 
and I cried a lot though but it's like really more sad than like fun for kids like I don't feel like that's a kids movie Lady and the Tramp on Disney Plus the new live action one I loved it I thought it was so great I love the diversity and like it's super clever but the diversity is like so random because of the time it takes place in but I like how they didn't did it and they didn't really talk about it they just kind of did it and I thought that was really cool um it was very Disney Disney and like it fit into the Disney world and it wasn't overdone they didn't like try too hard but they also didn't like not put enough effort in um I cried it was super sweet and it was just really it was a great movie I would totally recommend it and I think that'd be good for kids and adults this one I wrote a lot American Son that's a movie on Netflix it's with Kerry Washington and it is so upsetting and intense and I told my parents to watch it they actually didn't like it I loved it the entire movie takes place in one room which a lot of people probably like might not like but with the kind of movie it is I can see like it was a good choice I think but the, I'm like a big movie person it shows like the ridiculousness of police protocol and that police can really say whatever they want and, like you kind of have to believe them because they can make up whatever they want and it shows like the unbelievable power that police have they shouldn't have and it also shows how dealing with cops in rough situations is harder than it has to be like, I've dealt with cops like looking for someone and they just make it more difficult for you anytime I've ever dealt with cops whether it was a car accident or anything they make things more difficult when you're already going through a hard time and they don't have to do that like there's no protocol that says they have to do that they don't and there is good cops out there but like this really shows like I didn't think this was overdone at all I didn't think that this movie portrayed anything as an unrealistic thing like this all to me felt like something that could easily happen it made me angry to watch but it's kind of angry you want to watch like watching a documentary about climate change like that kind of angry i think to, to me it felt very much like the cops felt like you should admire them the cops felt that they just deserved respect because they're a cop but that's not really how what life works and they don't just because they signed up to be a cop doesn't mean they're a good person that's like my thought process of it and I'm not talking about all cops like just like when you talk about how guys suck like I'm not saying everyone there are cops out there like in this movie like they just force people to be like you just have to shut up and listen to me even if you've done nothing wrong like I'm in charge like that's not how it should be um the whole movie was very like about race so if you're not into that tough you should still watch it the ending is insane the whole thing I think it's so worth a watch like this is the kind of movie I would carve out time to watch and I know it's the kind of movie that's hard for people to watch um, especially people who have a lot of white privilege and especially people who don't want to admit that some cops are bad and not great and like the cops in this whether they are black or white I think they all had this complex of like I'm better everyone needs to respect me I signed on for this job so you have to respect me but to me that's not how it is I get that people like cops lives do matter I know I get it but just because they signed on for that job doesn't mean that their life should be more important than another innocent person that's where I stand like they signed on for that job if you didn't want to put your life at risk going out every day knowing that people have guns and people can kill you like don't become a cop no one's forcing you to become a cop that's how I think of it I think you signed on for this job to protect other people we didn't a bunch of innocent people walking around who didn't sign up to be cops shouldn't have to risk their lives for you but that's just my stance um, I don't feel like arguing about this in the comments because you're not going to change my mind and I don't expect to change yours but that's just what I'm that's how I feel the most recent one Snowpiercer this is kind of a couple years old it is so good my boyfriend actually told me to watch it um, and I finally did it's with Chris Evans and Octavia Spencer and a couple other really good people um, it takes place in the future and it's about global warming or climate change or whatever you want to call it um in the movie what happens is that climate change is making the earth so terrible that they release something into the atmosphere to fix it but it actually backfires and makes things worse and makes the world unlivable so the remaining people that are still alive are living on this train that just constantly circles around the globe above the atmosphere so um it's all about the people on this train and thing is instead of just treating everyone equally they have the survivors in first class and in the back and the people in the back who are poor are treated like animals they're i swear they're treated like the jews in the holocaust like they're treated terribly and then there's the people in the front of the train who like have caviar and sushi and like blah blah they're all fancy wearing like fur coats like it's craziness now so what's happening is that the people in the back of the train are fed up with being treated like this so they want to get to the front of the train take over the engine so they have the power and actually are treated like human beings but it gets very violent and kind of gory and it's like 
it's dark and twisted and crazy and there's like cultish parts and lots of propaganda but Chris Evans is phenomenal as always it honestly to me if I could describe it to you it's like the scene in Titanic where they locked all the poor people down when the ship was sinking they locked all the poor people up like they didn't want them to get up and get like escape that's what this movie kind of feels like um it's crazy the ending is crazy it's disturbing and it's not what i expected it was a solid like very good movie and i never heard of it which is crazy okay <laughs> a lifetime christmas movie was um it's called mistletoe menorahs it had craig manning from degrassi in it and that's why i recorded it on the dvr to watch it was absolutely terrible i mean he his acting was not bad but the whole plot was like the most ridiculous thing i've ever heard of pretty much i mean it was worse than a hallmark movie it was worse it was just so bad if i watched it pretty much it was about a girl a woman who was invited to a holiday party by this guy that she's going to make a business deal with and she is all about christmas and she's obsessed and she's like i cannot wait to go to this holiday party i'm like so pumped and then she finds out that the holiday party is not a christmas party it's a hanukkah party she knows nothing about Hanukkah or being Jewish, so instead of Googling it and having a week to kind of learn everything she can about it to impress this guy, she gets a friend to find a Jewish guy, which is just honestly, it seems so like insane. Like, they, just because you know someone who's Jewish doesn't mean they celebrate Hanukkah, doesn't mean that they know everything about Hanukkah. Like, her, she was telling her friend, like, oh, I know nothing about Hanukkah, what am I going to do? And she's like, oh, you know what, my kid's teacher is Jewish, so he'll teach you. Like just because your kid's teacher is Jewish, like, you're, like, he just knows everything about Hanukkah. It's just so random, um, and it just happens that he is dating a girl who's Catholic, and he's about to meet this, his girlfriend's parents, and they want this huge traditional Christmas, and he knows nothing about Christmas, which I find very hard to believe. I can get not understanding too much about Hanukkah, like, maybe just the basics, but, like, this girl knew nothing. She didn't know anything about the eight candles, like, she didn't know anything. And he was like not knowing anything about Christmas. He's like, oh, but I've seen a movie. If you've seen movies about Christmas, like you would know more than you know. So anyways, these two people are spending time together. I'm sure you can already tell what's gonna happen. Um, but like, you're gonna meet a new person and learn all about their respective holidays rather than just freaking Googling it. It was just so dumb. Like the whole concept of this movie was like, so dumb. I am glad they were giving like, you know, a holiday movie to Hanukkah and like they did teach you a lot about it and like not a lot, but like the kind of stereotypical things to be honest. Um it just felt like oh it was kind of like just so cheesy and like weird, but like I did watch it all the way through. And then I also was thinking actually after I watched it, it was like first of all, why would the guy who invited her to his holiday party not say that he was Jewish? Like, he just assumed that she was Jewish. If you see the conversation, you'll be like, she's like all about the holidays, and she's like, I love this time of year, and like, all this stuff, and they never mentioned Christmas. But like, why would he assume that she's Jewish? Like, and why wouldn't she just tell him, like, oh my gosh, I thought you were talking about Christmas. I don't know anything about Hanukkah. Like, I'd be open to learning. Like, and now he's, like, why would she know a lot about Hanukkah unless she was Jewish? So now she's like faking being Jewish to impress him it just didn't make any sense to me i just thought it was so random but that was the last movie i recently watched i'm right now in this middle of season three of marvelous mrs Maisel, which i'm loving not as much as the first two but i am loving um but that is it for this movie review thing that i do and i hope you enjoyed it if you did make sure to give it a big old thumbs up subscribe to see more from me and i'll see you next time